is so bloody hot hello everybody and welcome to another video i am trying to hold myself accountable by filming this video in the second week almost the third week of june it is my june book haul i want to say i'm doing this now because i'm trying not to buy any more books for the rest of the month but again you know how i am we'll see how that goes so let's start off with the free books well not necessarily free some of them are free some of them aren't some of them are giveaway books I'll explain as I go along. So the first book I got with my Audible credit for the month and that was The Ruins. Actually I don't think it was my Audible credit for the month. I actually decided to pay £18 this month for the first time ever and buy three books um, because I want to take part in a couple of like reading buddy read things. So this book was for the Summer Horror Camp hosted by Spookish Mummy and Sydney Books on Instagram. And this is The Ruins by Scott Smith. I have already read it and I'll tell you more about it in terms of review, thoughts and feelings, star rating, that sort of thing um, when the wrap up comes near the end of the month or beginning of next month. But basically we follow a group of friends and also random people they meet. They go to, I think it's Mexico um, for like a summer holiday it's, it's kind of like their big holiday before they start their real like adult lives and get back to like full-time job that sort of thing um so it's two sets of couples and the boys aren't really like super close or anything they're kind of just going along with their girlfriends they're just sort of acquaintances um and then on the on the journey or on the holiday they meet um matthias who is looking for his brother who went to these ruins um to i don't know for, uh, following a girl that he was like in love with he never returned so they were like yeah let's go for an adventure it'll be fine we'll find him we'll find the girl and yeah crazy things happen crazy scary things happen so that is the ruins i won a giveaway on a storygraph my first storygraph giveaway that i won and this is the raven by danny lamiar with gwendolyn cress i don't know why it's so tiny at the bottom i'm not sure why there's two authors but it's only one shown like here for example and on the picture that i printed out um the other author is really small not sure what the story is behind that but anyway blurb for this one says she saw the raven in her dreams, now her life's a nightmare. No matter how hard she tries, Rebecca just doesn't fit in at her prestigious Ivy League prep school. The cruel privileged students ridicule and bully her on a daily basis, and instead of standing up for herself, Rebecca retreats into a dark, unsettling world of nightmarish visions. In her dreams, a cloaked figure named the raven gives her a chance to turn the tables on her tormentors and exact bloody revenge. That kind of reminds me, not exactly, but it's making me think of season two of Vox Machina. She secretly relishes the power but then Rebecca discovers her dreams have terrifying consequences. The Raven's brutal revenge is real. Ah cool I think this is what uh, initially got me intrigued. The Raven the title and then at the beginning it said this rather than at the end or something similar. It says ripped straight from the pages of Edgar Allan Poe the Raven un unlocks deep truths about humanity and tackles self-worth, morality and the pain of doing what's right at all costs. So yeah, I want a ebook version of that, which is super exciting. I also um, got a free ebook, uh, like a promotional thing that the author was doing on the Instagram, called Leap of Faith by Patty Van Delft. Um, this is a prequel to another book that she's got coming out later this year, I believe. The book that's coming out later on in the year is called An Unbreakable Bond. I asked if she would recommend waiting for that book to come out because it's like the main story. You can read it straight away, she said. And it's like a dragon, ri dragon and a rider um, story, fantasy story. And it says, about 340 years ago, the people of our world hunt dragons out of fear because the magic is fading. They are no longer able to communicate with each other. The dragon race is on the verge of extinction. When one of the dragons accidentally finds a portal to another world, could there be room there to live in peace? It will take a lot of courage and a leap of faith to find out. And it's a dragon doom, a short story from the perspective of the dragon. So I'll be looking forward to trying that out. I'm not sure how many pages it is, but it is like a short story before set beforehand. By the way, the Unbreakable Bond is available in paperback and ebook from July 2023 so not long to wait at all I'm not sure on the official date that it's dropping though then there was another author that I saw just randomly popped up on Instagram to be honest so I was like oh yeah okay I'll try that um who was doing another promotional thing for a free short story um and this is called Rose Fairy it had a beautiful website if I can find the author's name I will pop it there 
just a short little um like fairy story and it sounded really sweet and magical so i have downloaded that um as a pdf file i think it was so with my other two audible credits that i have bought i decided to check out fourth wing by rebecca yaros that everybody is talking about it's another dragon rider story and i'm currently reading a story now a quest the quest of awakening i think it is which is also a dragon rider story how weird is that i didn't even intentionally do that i've seen a lot of um opposing reviews some really love it some really hate it or just think it's like mediocre um which i guess is the same for everything really but like the reviews i've seen have been like absolutely five stars and then other people have been like one star not worth it so i'm more kind of was interested to see what i would fall in that category rather than actually knowing what it's about um so let's find out together Enter the brutal and elite world of War College for Dragon Riders. 20 year old Violet Surangal was supposed to enter the Scribe Quadrant, living a, li living a quiet life among books and history. That sounds like my kind of life, not gonna lie, I love that. Now the Commanding General, also known as her toughest Talon's mother, has ordered Violet to join the hundreds of candidates striving to become the elite of, the the elite of Nevers, Dragon Riders. But when you're smaller than everyone else and your body is brittle, death is only a heartbeat away because dragons don't bond to fragile humans, they incinerate them. Fewer dragons willing to bond than cadets. Most would kill Violet to better their own chances of success. The rest would kill her just for being her mother's daughter, like Zayden Ryerson. Ryerson? Ryerson? Ryerson. The most powerful and ruthless wing leader in the Riders' Quadrant. She'll need every edge her wits can give her just to see the next sunrise. Yet with every day that passes, the war outside grows more deadly. The kingdom's protective wards are failing and the death toll continues to rise. Even worse, Violet begins to suspect leadership is hiding a terrible secret. Oh, we love a corrupt political game. Um, friends, enemies, lovers, everyone at Basgaith War College has an agenda because once you enter, there are only two ways out graduate or die that sounds so fun dragon riders but almost like a dark academia setting with older characters as well so i'm really actually excited for that that does sound like something i'd love um yeah I'm, I'm intrigued by it if i wasn't already i mean i heard dragon riders and then it was like people love it people hate it so i was like okay let's give it a listen but that actually sounds really like right up my street i also got a three book bundle on audio um this is derek landy's Goldduggery pleasant the darkest trilogy so i have been reading skullduggery pleasant for years i've been borrowing them for my cousin the latest book i borrowed over christmas and i've still not given back because i've not read it yet but i am on Deathbringer, so i'm not sure where that gives me to this but i think after i caught up on um some of the paperbacks like the physical reads i'll switch over to audio because i'll probably get it done quicker at that point um so yeah whenever i match up to this or i can find other audios of the books after the uh, Darkbringer. That's what I'll do. I'll just listen to it. So yeah, Skull Duggery Pleasant is about a skull skeleton detective and this hidden world of like magical creatures and fighting for what's right and all that sort of stuff. So it's there's more much more to it than that. But yeah, it's a, it's a fun series. I feel like it ages with the reader because it originally it started off feeling very middle grade but there is some really dark content in it now i'm on like what possibly the fifth or sixth book and i feel like it has aged like it kind of ages with the reader i'd imagine right on to physical books so the first two i picked up in a trip to the works and they're two random purchases to be honest i wasn't going in there looking for books i just went in there because i wanted to get this actually a little fairy door because i wanted to stick it on my terrarium but i couldn't find anything smaller but i thought this would still be cool because i saw someone or a couple of people now actually paint these in like a fantasy kind of vibe maybe from their favorite book or something so i was thinking maybe um I don't know something like lord of the rings or the one in particular that i saw was once upon a broken heart and then they had jax's um dagger next to it and that came in a fairy loot box and i've got that as well and i was like oh my god i want to do something similar so i think i've got a couple miniature like swords some of them are actually like letter openers and things like that so that'd be really cool um i'll try and find that person where did i find it i don't even know what you'd call that like a mini door diorama or something but yeah, I wanted to do something like that now that I know that it's way too big for this. So I printed out a little picture of a fairy door instead and stuck it on the front. Anyway, I digress heavily. The books that I got during that trip was 
The Books of Shadows, um, A Journal of Magic Spells and Ritual by Anastasia Greywolf. And I love these little books. Whenever I see them, I tend to pick them up, to be honest. Um, I've got quite a few now. Some of them are more journaly and like they prompt you. Others are like little books on crystals and spells and things like that. This one is kind of a blend of the two, to be honest. So it's got places where you can write and like do like your book of shadows, so to speak. Um, and then there's also like spells dotted in and like information for your witchy imagination. So I love that this has a blend of the two. Um, and it just says on the back that it's the modern day practices of witchcraft and magic, which are rooted in spirituality and comes from knowing yourself and the elements around you. There is no better guide to accompany both beginner and advanced witches than the Book of Shadows. It's both the journal and grimoire to document and reflect on your spell work. And then it's just got a list of some of the things that it includes. Also in that trip, I picked up Juno Dawson's Her Majesty's Royal Coven. This cover has really been speaking to me since I saw it. And I've been wanting to get it for ages. And I, I almost put it off buying it because I feel like I had a hard cover copy. But I don't know if that's true or not i'm not i can't remember if i've got a copy of this somewhere i really should have double checked i almost feel like i might have got it in a book box i really can't remember um but i bought it anyway for six pounds and if i do have it and it's a multiple copy i'll just try and sell it on or something um but yeah this one says this is one government department you don't want to mess with and it sounded like really cool um hidden among us is a secret coven of witches known as her majesty's royal coven they protect crown and country from magical forces and otherworldly evil but their greatest enemy will come from within there are whisperings of a prophecy that will bring the coven to its knees and four best friends are about to be caught in the center life as a modern witch was never simple but now it's about to get apocalyptic <laughs> it sounds so epic and i still haven't read anything by juno dawson i've been wanting to for so long she's got so many books that i'm interested in. i wonder if there's a list at the front because there's a couple oh yeah there's a list let's see say her name i've been wanting to read wonderland the gender games du -du 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 -du. there was another one as well i'd probably recognize it, it might have been hollow pike but I probably recognize it more for the cover if you know what i mean um so yeah there's that book then i was at a really cute independent bookstore called chicken and frog which i hadn't visited in years this is the little little bag books on my bag um i hadn't visited in years and when i went to look for it again it wasn't in the place that i remembered it being so i was like oh no it's shut down so i put up google maps and i followed it and it's it's moved and it's so much bigger i should have a couple of pictures um that i can dot around hopefully if i haven't deleted them um but yeah it's such a nice independent show i think they do like um tutoring as well for like english and maths gcse just general um they also said they do uh adult nights where they do like board games Games, drinks that sort of thing so I said oh my god I'd actually love to go and um, they do a lot of uh, street parties as well it just sounded like such a lovely community so I picked up three books in that shop the first one I had seen floating about I think it's a pretty new release the um the lady at the till told me that they literally just bought this and she was looking at it and I was like oh I'm sorry I've taken it from you she's like no you're gonna have to let us know if it's any good um and that is the grimoire of grave fate um created by Hannah Alcuff and Margaret Owen and I think it's like a collection or each author writes a story that centers into this bigger story or something like that so it says 20 hours 18 students one murder see this is what confused me because it's got stories by but it sounds like a big overall like story like a cohesive story so let's find out a bit more Crack open your spell books. A prestigious school for young sorcerers, the Galileo Academy, has recently reinvented itself as a place in which students of all cultures and identities are celebrated. But some people aren't so happy with the changes. That includes everyone's least favourite professor, Septimus Dropwort, a, stoddy, a stodgy old man known for his harsh rules and harsher punishment. But when the professor's body is discovered on, gr on school grounds under mysterious circumstances, the Academy's students must solve the murder themselves before the lens of suspicion turns on them told from 18 diverse perspectives with chapters written by 18 best-selling and critically acclaimed authors ah so that's how they're doing it the grimoire of grave fates follows galileo's best and brightest young sorcerers as they race to discover the truth behind dropwort's mystifying death that sounds so cool but they're about to discover that even for a straight a students magic doesn't always play by the rules that sounds so freaking cool oh my god i'm really intrigued for how that will create like 
how everyone's voices are going to be distinct but is it going to like still blend nicely into a cohesive story you know so here are some of the well here are all the authors that are writing each chapter oh my god this looks so cool it looks like a bit of multimedia as well like i've just seen like email looking things like there's imagery there's text messages oh my god okay this looks so freaking cool i also picked up black nerd problems by william evans and omar holman this is a selection of essays and i flicked through i saw craig of the creek and i saw other like pop culture references that i was like really in awe of and i was like okay yeah i need to i need to get this because this is speaking to me um i don't really like super shiny covers though like it was that like, glare kind of annoys me but nevertheless when William Evans and Omar Holman founded the website Black Nerd Problems, they had no idea if anyone beyond their small circle of friends would be interested in their little corner of the internet. But soon after launching, they were surprised to find out that they were, there were a wide community of people who hungered for fresh insights and all things nerdy from this perspective of owned voices. In the years since, Evans and Holman have built a large, dedicated fan base eager for their brand of culture critique, whether in the form of laugh out loud raucous raucous Game of Thrones episode recap or an eloquent essay on dealing with grief through comedy. Now they are ready to take the next step with this vibrant and hilarious essay collection which covers everything from X-Men to Breonna Taylor with alternating, alternately hilarious, thought-provoking and passionate insight and intelligence. A much needed and fresh pop culture critique from the perspective of people of colour, this hugely entertaining, eminently thoughtful collection, these are all in like quotations, this is people's reviews, um, is a masterclass in how powerful and fun cultural criticism can be. Ooh, this looks like I'm gonna love it. Woo! And then I also finally bit the bullet and picked up this book, which is one that I've been wanting to get for a while. This cover is absolutely stunning, like the photography on it and oh, the bumblebees. It's called Small Favours by Erin A. Craig and this is how she looks. So, it's from the best-selling author of House of Sort and Sorrows, which I've still yet to read. Um, it comes, comes a mesmerising and chilling novel about dark wishes and even darker dreams. Ellery Downing is waiting for something to happen. Life in isolated Amity Falls, surrounded by an impenetrable forest, has, predictable, has a predictable sameness. Her days are filled with tending to her family's beehives, chasing after her sisters and dreaming of bigger things, while her twin Samuel is free to roam as he wishes. Early settlers fought off monstrous creatures in the woods, and whispers, whispers that the creatures still exist keep the Downings and their neighbours from venturing too far. When some townsfolk go missing, on a trip to fetch supplies, a heavy unease settles over the falls. Strange activities begin to plague the town, and as the seasons change, it's clear that something is terribly wrong. The creatures are real, and they're offering to fulfil the residents' deepest de desires, however grand, for just a small favour. These seemingly trifling demands, however, hide sinister intentions. Soon, Ellery finds herself in a race against time to stop Amity Falls, her family and the boy she loves from going up in flames. The heart's desire always comes with a price. And it slipped off the uh, shiny book beneath it. And then lastly, I went to see The Little Mermaid yesterday and I've just gone to see Across the Spider-Verse today. But anyway, um, before I went home yesterday, I popped into Waterstones. I didn't think it would still be open because it was like quarter to seven. Um, and I picked up two books. I'll start with this one actually because it follows up another book that I've shown here. And this is, again, Juno Dawson, The Shadow Cabinet, Something's Rotten at the Heart of Government. And this is the sequel to... Just use a royal coven. I'm really annoyed that I have <laughs> got a paperback and a hardback. I think I didn't really think about it. I knew I don't know. I knew that I had picked it up recently, but I didn't think that this would annoy me. And lastly, I saw these gorgeous um editions. They're like new versions of the science fiction masterworks. Um, I have like the old versions, which I also love. So now I'm like, if they don't sell those old versions anymore. I guess I will go to these ones, but I think I preferred these ones. I don't know, some covers look better in the old form. I like this cover in this form. This is Richard Matheson's I Am Legend. And I've been wanting to watch the movie recently. Um, so I thought, oh my God, this is perfect timing. I'll get the book. Yeah, look how striking that is. That is absolutely gorgeous. I love the yellow and like that ruddy, browny, blood red. It's like dried blood. Anyway. Welcome to the best of the masterworks, a selection of the finest in science fiction. Robert Neville is the last living man on earth, but he's not alone. Every other man, woman and child on the planet has become a vampire, and they are hungry for Neville's blood. 
By day he is the hunter, stalking the undead through the ruins of civilization, and by night he barricades himself in his home and prays for the dawn. How long can one man survive like this? Oh wow, it's winner of the Bram Stoker Prize for Vampire Novel of the Century. Oh my god, it's a stunning blend of science fiction and horror. And it's much shorter than I thought it was going to be. But yeah, there we are everyone. That is the book haul. Again, really hoping I can keep myself centred and not purchase any more. Um, <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. Let me know if you've picked up any of these books. Your thoughts, your feelings. And yeah, maybe what I should get to relatively soon but for now i shall catch you in another video soon bye